Hello, I'm Nicola. Thanks for joining me in the parent training video. I've spent the last few years completing a research master's on the mastery learning folder process to ensure that it aligns with research in cognitive psychology. If you have any questions or need any further information, please feel free to get in touch via email and I wish you all the best. I'd like to start with a little exercise for your training. I'd like you to see how many of these 17 numbers you can remember. So just take a little time to take a look at them and then I'm going to take them away. Okay, how did you go? On average, we can remember maybe six or less. Uh, if you remember more than that, congratulations. That certainly isn't how well I would do. So I would like you now to see how many of these 17 letters you can remember. I feel fairly confident that you would be able to repeat those 17 letters quite easily and there's a reason for that. This little exercise is demonstrating the difference between working memory and long-term memory. You'd be able to remember those letters because you have an understanding of the sound symbol relationships between the alphabet and the sound. You know what the words mean you know what a sentence is, so many things you're bringing down into your working memory as a chunk because you've got that knowledge in long-term memory. So that's why it's so important for us to get your child's knowledge into their long-term memory and not just sitting in the working memory. This is what Kirshner, Sweller and Clark, some well-known researchers in cognitive psychology, have stated. If nothing has changed in long-term memory, nothing has been learned. So that is our goal in using mastery learning folders. Erickson and Poole did a study on the habits and practices of very high achievers across many different areas. And they found that their abilities boiled down to deliberate practice. And I'm sure you would know from your own personal experience that practice really is the key. What we want to do is we want to use the most effective practice strategies. Cognitive psychology has identified that spacing out learning across time is very effective. Practicing retrieving learning or recalling the learning called retrieval practice. This is super important and very effective. Interleave practice means just mixing up practice examples. So rather than taking a particular type of mathematics sum, for example, and practicing pages and pages of them, mix up different types of mathematics questions for practice. And then elaboration is just explaining our thinking or asking our child to explain how they remembered or what their understanding is. This reinforces memory pathways. If you'd like to learn more about the learning science of these strategies that are used in the Mastery Learning Folder, that's a website that you can go to. Your child's folder may look like this or this, depending on their age. These are the pockets that you're going to be focusing on. And this is what the folder will look like when you first receive it. You'll be starting your tutor testing from the pocket that says start or tutor testing, but if there isn't any content in those pockets, then you'll move backwards through the pocket till you find the one that has content in it. For the purposes of the demonstration in the video, I'll be starting with the pockets fully populated with flashcards. You'll notice that there's both test and rest pockets. Retrieval practice occurs in the test pockets and the rest pockets just expand the spaced interval between tests for the flashcards in those pockets. 
Your child's folder may contain subject specific content like maths or it might contain cross curricular content as displayed here. If your child does have mixed content, then what you will want to do as you pull out the content from each pocket is simply to rearrange it into subject areas. You can then gather those flashcards into your hand and proceed with the retrieval test. So now I'll take you through one folder session. The flashcards that you see here are arranged as they might appear after a week or so and because there's flashcards in the tutor testing pocket that is where we're going to begin. In general what happens when testing is if the flashcard is remembered it moves forward to the next pocket. If it's not remembered or demonstrated it is placed aside till all the flashcards in the pocket have been tested and then the incorrect flashcards are returned to the same pocket. So you can see that there are four steps. The first step is, is to rearrange the flashcards in your hand as you take them out of each pocket. I'm not doing that for the demonstration because I'm only using a small number of flashcards. After that the next thing is to test the flashcards. So this phonic sound, er, was remembered. The next step is to ask questions about the content. So you could ask, how did you remember that? Or can you think of a word that has the er sound? This flashcard doesn't require any help because it was recalled correctly. Now, the tutor testing pocket is special. Content that is correct in this pocket moves into the next phase of the folder process, which is looked after by the teacher or the education assistant usually. So it's coming out of the tutor phase. Because one flashcard's coming out of the tutor phase, we need to transfer a new flashcard from the store pocket and place it aside until all the pockets are finished, and then it will come into the process into the first pocket which I'll show you. Let's continue through the tutor testing pocket. This flashcard was not able to be sounded out, so it's placed aside. You could ask the student which sounds they do know, for example, and you could help them with maybe some rhyming words. And then this is a, a simple maths question, which I'm saying wasn't able to be demonstrated. So you could perhaps give a little demonstration of how to use three items to count how many there are. So now that this pocket is finished, the incorrect flashcards return to the same pocket. The next pocket is a rest pocket. So that signals to you that no testing is going to occur of these flashcards. They're just going to move as a bundle up to the next pocket, increasing the spaced interval of those flashcards prior to the next testing session. So now we move on to the next pocket back. Pet, uh, this is a sounding out word and the student was able to sound it out and so that moves forward to the next pocket. This flashcard leg, perhaps there was a sound in there that wasn't recognised so you could talk about which part of the flashcard uh, wasn't remembered. And then that flashcard returns to the same pocket. We're going to keep moving backward through the pockets to this one. So this is adding coins together. That flashcard was successfully demonstrated and so you might ask them what order did you add those coins in? And they might uh, tell you they started with the largest coin, which you could reinforce and say, yes, that's absolutely how to do it. The next flashcard is a phonics sounding out word. It is also able to be demonstrated. Now I'm moving back to the final pocket. Is this shape demonstrating half? And the student 
gets the correct answer there. Perhaps you could ask them to point out something else that is symmetrical that could also be divided in half. And this is subtracting with friends of 10. So prior to doing these types of sums, the students would have learnt the number combinations that go together to make 10. So because this one was unable to be recalled, then you could go back to asking, well, what number goes with 4 to make 10? So that is going to return to the same pocket. Now you remember that we have a flashcard over here because uh, one flashcard came out of the process into the teacher section, we're going to take this flashcard now and put it into the active pockets and we have finished the session. Just remember each pocket you're going to pull out the flashcards if you've got cross-curricular content, that is, mixed subjects, arrange it into subjects, test the content. For each flashcard ask a question that will help to reinforce that memory pathway and if the student has not got the answer right then you can help them with that content. So for example the next folder session may be on a Tuesday. There could be between four to six sessions per week. Uh, that will depend on um, your teacher's instructions. But let's, let's imagine that the next session is on the Tuesday. So I'm just going to talk through uh, this without the animation. So you'll be testing the content in this pocket. If it's correct, it will move forward. If it's not correct, it will be left aside. You will ask questions about the content, you will provide help where needed, and then the incorrect content will come back into the same pocket. The flashcard in this pocket, the rest pocket, won't be tested, it will simply move up to the next pocket. Then you'll move backwards to the next pocket, testing each flashcard, moving it forward if correct, asking questions that can reinforce that memory pathway, particularly things like how did you remember it or what strategy did you use or how did you do it? And then the flashcards that are not correct, you can provide some help both in explaining and also maybe helping them come up with ideas of how they could remember the answer next time. Working backwards through the pockets. And if there was a correct answer here, then a flashcard would have been placed aside, which will then, at the end of the session, go into the first test pocket. These pockets here are the responsibility, usually, of the teacher or an education assistant. However, if you're using the folder to help your child with their foundational learning independently at home, then you will also use these pockets. But the testing and the resting here in this section happens once a week. So I'm just going to go through what happens at this once a week mastery testing session with the teacher so that you know. So the teacher will begin testing from the mastery test pocket. This skip counting question was demonstrated so it will move forward to the mastered pocket. And so was that maths question. This maths problem solving question was not able to be demonstrated and so the teacher will be returning that to the same pocket. Now you can see this is a rest pocket so the teacher will be moving these flashcards as a bundle up to the next pocket. These flashcards are also resting, they will move up to the next pocket. Then we have an empty pocket here that these flashcards will be going into if they're correct. First of all, what is that coin? I think that was. So that was demonstrated, that was correct. And there we have a maths question. That one wasn't able to be demonstrated. And I say demonstrated because the teacher will be looking for the strategy that they've been learning in class. And then we move back to the next pocket and these flashcards are resting so they will move up to the test pocket. I just like to show you the intervals that are associated with this weekly testing. The tutor testing has intervals over days because the folder sessions are occurring from four 
to six times a week. So they're fairly short. There's one rest pocket in the Tudor testing stage and that might be maybe a rest of half a week. Because these sessions with the teacher are once a week, the intervals, the rest intervals, are much longer. So in this section, the content is resting for one to two weeks. And when flashcards are in this section, they're resting for three weeks. So this gives a very good indication of whether or not the content has been mastered. So your child is very lucky to have you and thank you so much for either independently using the folder to help your child with their foundational learning or if you're participating through your school. Thank you so much. You have an amazing opportunity here to really help them to solidify that foundational knowledge which will make a very big difference to their educational future. So please feel free to get in touch if you have questions and I wish you all the best.